Hi, in this uh, clip I'm going to show you how to play the first um, Rock School Grade 3 guitar piece, Easy Taxi. Um, I'll play through it first of all, um, I shall then um, go through any of the difficult kind of bits and pieces played through sort of performance techniques and that kind of thing. I shall then play through it a second time with the backing track slowed down about 20% um, so you can see everything happening a bit more slowly. Finally I'll play through it a third time um, with my volume turned down so the backing track will still be running slightly slow uh, and you'll have a visual guide of uh, where you're supposed to be in the song but you can use it for practicing at a nice easy tempo. Right okay here we go so this is Hazy Taxi. Hazy Taxi. Right, okay. And the first thing you need to look at when you're performing this piece is uh, it's in swing time, it's in um, triplet eighths. So your uh, quavers, rather than sounding like this, is three in the space of two, so it's. Now, when you're reading um, triplet quavers, um, this kind of swing notation, what you've got to do is you've got to think of it as playing the first and last one of each triplet. So um, rather than your um, quaver sounding like this, it would sound like this. So they've been kind of pushed apart, if you know what I mean. Right, um, first section, you've got um, full E chord, followed by two fifth um, chords. So when you're playing the G, um, I tend to use my second finger, you can of course use your third finger. Um, make sure you lay it across a little bit so you're muting out the A string and then you've got the D and G strings open. And when you come to play the A fifth um, chord, again to get to it nice and quickly from the previous um, G fifth chord, the best way to do it is use your first finger as a partial bar, so you're actually playing the D string and G string with one finger. Um, important thing again when you're doing all of these changes, because they happen very fast, is that you make sure you're not hitting accidentally um, any of the other open strings that you don't want, to so make sure it still sounds nice and punchy. So, E, G, up to A, back to G, and E again. Um, you've got a behind the nut strike as the first fill. That's all it means, so basically, uh, just mute off the strings on the actual fingerboard, and then just pluck the strings um, between the top nut and the actual tuners, so it does that kind of harp sound. Um, second one's a small bend from F to G. Again, it's important here as well, actually. Um, at the end of each four bar phrase, um, it comes in a quaver early, so after you've done that, it's actually one, two, three, four, and you've got one um, E chord before the phrase starts each time. So um, with the fills, it's one, two, three, four. So don't forget that quaver at the end there on each repeat. Um, 
uh, third fill is uh, Mute Strife followed by mm. Descending Glissando. Uh, a important thing to notice as well is the fact that um, on the repeat you don't do the fills, they're actually completely silent. Make sure you only do the fills on the first repeat. Right, the second section, the chords. First one's nice and easy, it's just an A minor seventh, there's a bar at the fifth fret, so just top four strings and um, barred off. Uh, you've got staccato markings as well, the dots above the actual um, crotchets, the actual notes on the stave. That means you've got to cut the sustain nice and short, okay, so make sure they're nice and muted, really short. Um, the change to the um, E minor over G will take a little bit getting used to. Um, you should be playing it um, third finger, second finger, fourth finger, first finger. But there's no way, easy way around it. With any of these chord changes, repeat them. That's the key to getting them nice and smooth. So start off, um, just going from the bar straight to that um, E minor over G and back again. And just keep doing it until you can do it nice and smoothly. Um, the same when you get to the B7, the next chord. Now, that I, I tend to play that with um, the 5th fret with my little finger and then the 4th um, fret as a bar with my 1st finger. You can, of course, use any combination of fingers there to whatever you're kind of happiest doing, really. But again, just repeat the changes. So from the B7 to the um, E minor over G, just keep doing it until you can do it smoothly. Um, right, so when you get to the last line, where you've got the C7 there, um, it's performed as an E7 sort of bar chord shape. So if you imagine your normal E7 there, barred off at the 8th fret. Now obviously the way it's notated here and written down, you're not playing the bottom two strings. So it's, you might forget you try and play it like that, just as the top four strings. But play it as a full bar chord. Reason being, when it comes to the B7 on the next bar, you're playing those bottom two notes. So it's much easier to change. You're just moving it down one semitone. that change much easier. Um, right, the end of the next section where you've got the next section of chords, the E, the D, A, C section. That's easy. You've then got a little arpeggio, quite fast this one happens, so you want further in the open strings. Again, same as the first section, you've then got an E um, chord as a quaver before um, the start of the next bar, so you've got to make sure you don't miss that note out. So you don't want to have a gap after that E chord of a full bar. You've got to come in on the last quaver of that bar. So it's um, one, two, three, four, bum, bum, bum. so you come in slightly before the beat there. So don't don't miss that one out. Um, right now, the interesting bit. Um, you've got some unison bends um, at the end of the second line of the second page there on page five. Um, you've got you're playing a D sharp on your B string and a tone lower on your um, G string and what you do is you're whilst fretting that D sharp you're bending the lower note up to that other note obviously with this locking trem low I tend to get a little bit of sag on the trem here so I tend to use the um, bar to use them for to a bit of vibrato but um, that's the idea is you're trying to get both notes to sound the same um, if you're doing vibrato with your left hand, you hear it get crunchy as you drop it down and the dissonance will go away when you're in tune. Hear that? So you can use that to emphasise the vibrato. And same uh, semitone higher. Tone higher again. And again. So what's your tuning on those bends? Um, right, solo section. Uh, key signatures E minor, so you can use your pentatonic scale. Or if feeling brave, full E minor scale. Um, the little melody that they've used at the, on the um, example, the um, CD, um, it's quite a nice little melody to use. Reason being, it fits very well against the actual notes in the chords. Look at the chords you're actually playing over for the guitar solo. You're starting with an A minor. They start that melody on a C, so that's actually one of the um, tones actually in the chord. So that's why it fits so nicely. You go down to E minor there, there's your E note. And then a B note, and you're playing a B7 chord there. So again, it fits quite nicely there. 
Um, so, idea is try and stick to the chord tones as much as you can and make it nice and melodic. So, don't just mindlessly thrash away on a pentatonic scale. Try and make it sound tuneful. That's the key. So, nice strong sense of timing. Right, I'll play through it again now with the timing, uh, with the speed slowed down a little tiny bit. And then after that, again, third time with my volume turned down completely. Easy taxi. One, two, one, two, three, four. Last time with my volume turned down this time. Easy taxi. Seven. Right, 
back into the cool section. There we go. Hope that's of some help.